Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering thromboangitis obliterans. Now, I know I've been doing a segment on STDs, and the reason I'm not continuing that today is because the booklet that I was teaching that out of, I can't find it. I don't know where it is. So until I do find it, I promise I'll find it soon. I got to keep it moving. So we're going to be covering thromboangitis obliterans. And I promise I'm going to look for that booklet. And hopefully by tomorrow or within the next couple of days, at least I can continue that segment on STDs. But for today, it's going to be thromboangitis obliterans. So let's take a look, guys. Thromboangitis obliterans, this is also known as Berger's disease. And look what it says. It says this is a non-atherosclerotic segmental recurrent inflammation disorder of the small, medium arteries, veins, and upper and lower extremities. So let's talk about this. Why did I underline non-atherosclerotic? So what's happening here, guys, this um, inflammation that the patient's happening in, that the patient's having in the arteries and veins, it has nothing to do with plaque. OK, has nothing to do with plaque. And that's important for you guys to know. That's why I underlined the non-arthrosclerotic. Now, let's keep going. It says that this disease occurs mostly in young men younger than 45 years of age with a long history of tobacco and or marijuana use and chronic periodontal infection, but without other cardiovascular disease risk factors such as hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes. Guys, when it comes to Berger's disease, aka thromboangitis obliterans, the first thing that you need to be thinking in your mind is smoking because that is the number one cause. That is the number one factor for this disorder, okay? Something important for you guys to know that we see this more in males than we do in females. Now, in the acute phase of Berger's disease, remember this is an inflammatory disorder. In uh, the acute phase, inflammatory thrombus, that, that's a clot, it forms and it blocks the vessel. Over time, th that thrombus, that clot becomes more organized and the inflammation in the vessel wall subsides. So during the chronic phase, thrombosis and fibrosis occur in the vessel causing tissue ischemia. What does that mean? That's cell death. Cell death is happening with this happening over and over and over again. Here I am right here. Here. Patients may have intermittent claudication of the feet, hands, or arms. And guys, that claudication comes with the repeated episodes of those spasms. Where was I? As the disease progresses... Rest pain and ischemic ulcerations develop. So as this disorder continues to progress, even when that patient's at rest, they'll have that pain. Because at the beginning, what happens, they'll have pain with movement, doing things. Because the more that you move around, the more your tissues need oxygen. Oxygen is being carried what? In the blood. That The blood is not being delivered if there's all of this uh, vasospasms that are happening, if there's all of this vasoconstriction that's happening. So that's at the beginning. But then as this disorder continues and it gets worse, even with rest, the patient will experience these symptoms. Other signs and symptoms may include color and temperature changes of the limbs. What do they mean by color and temperature changes? Well, you know, when you're, the skin's pink, that shows you know circulation, blood flow. Those color temperatures may turn to pale or even blue, right? Cyanosis. Those are color, te uh, color, color changes that they're talking about. Temperature changes. What temperature changes are they talking about? When you touch the skin, the skin's nice and warm. What's causing that warmth? Blood flow. But as circulation decreases, instead of the skin being warm, it may be cooler. So that's the temperature changes that they're talking about. Paresthesia, that patient may have um, the feelings of pins and needles, and that comes with the decreased circulation. Superficial vein thrombosis and cold sensitivity. There are no laboratory diagnostic tests specific to Berger's disease. Diagnosis is made on the age of onset, history, clinical symptoms, big time clinical symptoms, by the way, involvement of the distal vessels. Let me lower this for you. There we go. And presence of ischemic ulcers. And that you'll see more in the lower extremities. Look at this, guys. And exclusion of auto immune disease. So when we even suspect that maybe this pa patient has Berger's disease, they're going to be tested for all the other autoimmune disorders first. And we're going to make sure that we exclude those autoimmune disorders before that patient's going to be diagnosed with Berger's disease. What else? Diabetes, thrombophilia, 
and other sources of emboli, such as atherosclerosis. That's that, uh, that fat that I was talking to you about, the plaques, and aneurysm. What is aneurysm? Aneurysm is a weakening of the blood vessel. Let's keep going. The primary, the number one treatment for Burgers disease is, look at this, complete cessation of tobacco and marijuana use in any form. It does not say moderation. It does not say slow down. It says complete cessation, 100%, immediately stop smoking. Tobacco cigarettes, immediately stop smoking marijuana. Immediately stop using those two products. Patients must choose between their tobacco and marijuana and their affected limb, but not both. What does that mean? If they don't stop, eventually that limb is going to have to be amputated. They have to choose. Do they want the limb or do they want the tobacco and marijuana? The minute you see Burgers disease or you hear Burgers disease or thromboangitis or obliterans, you need to be thinking of smoking. You need to be thinking of tobacco or marijuana, okay? By the way, this is all over HESI and Clex ATI, so make sure you know that. Patients, oh, I talked to you about that. So conservative management includes avoiding limb exposure to cold temperatures. Why? Think about this disease process where this patient's having uh, chronic inflammation of the vessels. There's chronic constriction going on. Do you think they need uh, to be exposed to cold? What does cold cause? Vasoconstriction. They already have decreased circulation. They don't need any more exposure to cold where that could cause vasoconstriction. So you can have them stay away from cold temperatures. Supervised walking program. Walking is good, but they need supervision. What do I, uh, what do I mean by that? Walking is good because it increases circulation, but walking, the more that you move, the more that you exercise, the more oxygen that your muscles and tissues demand, right? So it's going to be increase the demand on the body. Antibiotics to treat any infected ulcers, because that's one of the things that can happen with this constant vasoconstriction, right? Patients, the tissue's not getting enough oxygen. Patient can start to get um, ulcers, especially in those lower extremities. So um, if they get infected, they'll need antibiotics. And analgesics, that's pain management for the ischemic pain. As that tissue um, is suffering from lack of oxygen, those cells may start to die off. That patient will experience the pain, so they'll need analgesics as ordered. You're going to teach the patients to avoid trauma to the extremities because extremities are the parts of the body that are hit most due to this disease disorder. And guys, let me tell you, that is your Burgers disease slash thromboangitis in a nutshell. Let me know what you thought about this video. I know it was short, but it's straight to the point. The most important thing you guys need to know about this disorder. I'm going to also cover Raynaud's in another video, just so you guys can know the difference between Raynaud's disease and Burgers. But let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. And guys, I promise I will get back to my STD series as soon as I find that booklet. I feel like I left it in the car. I searched my car my car completely and I couldn't find it, but that's the last place I remember having it. But I promise I'm going to find it and I'm going to continue that series. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.